is first of all, is this your scout? It is this game. What what do you when you play a guy like Davis? I mean, he's he's experienced. He can score. You guys saw that uh, obviously last week against Furman, a guy that could do that. Um, what's kind of been the focus in preparation for this uh, in, in regards to Detroit Mercy? Well, I think beyond Davis, I mean, you mentioned him. He's a tremendous scorer, uh, second in the nation scoring last year, 24 a game. Um, just a big, big piece of what they do. Uh, you can make the argument he's the fulcrum of, of everything um, Detroit Mercy is trying to accomplish on offense, and, and everything goes through him. Uh, having said that, I mean, they have some really talented scorers around him as well. I mean, Keith McAdoo can really fill it up. Uh, 21 t against Toledo, 5 of 7 from 3. Had a really nice game the other night against Mississippi State. Um, but did a catch. Uh, another guy whose talent has really started showing through. Um, after his time at USF, and I think this is a really nice fit for him at Detroit Mercy um, as far as style of play, excuse me, ability to get on the offensive glass, make plays in transition, um, getting downhill, and he's shooting the ball at a really high level as well. So um, Matt Johnson's a really, really nice piece off the bench for them, you know, sixth man of the year in the Horizon League. Uh, and then DJ Harvey, that's a guy that averaged 11 points a game in the ACC for Notre Dame. So uh, I think when you look one through seven for them, uh, and that's not even counting Noah Waterman, who's unbelievably talented. Um, whether he plays or not is, is remains to be seen. But as far as an offensive skill set, he's, he'll be as skilled as any big guy that we play. So um, it's not just Davis, as good as he is. Um, it's a really talented group individually, and we'll have to we'll have to really show up tomorrow night to get a win. What's the challenge of that in scouting and in obviously in implementing what you scout? In that you, you know, when you have a guy like that who's averaging 24, you think take that guy away and you're in good shape. But if they've got these other guys, what's the challenge of sort of balancing? The, the attention that you pay to him and also making sure that you're not overloading him and, and giving these other guys opportunity? That's a great question. I, I think this, finding that kind of balance is going to be a key to the game, right? How do we not just have five guys looking at Davis and still being very, very, very well aware of, of the guy they're matched up with? Um, so I, I think it's just, uh, fortunately for the way we play, our help principles, our gap principles are already built into the pack line defense. So, uh, I, you know, the idea is if things go according to plan, our positioning will be our help and we'll be in the right places and, and deter driving lanes and close out with high hands and, and make shots and, and becoming open really, really difficult. Um, and hopefully that flows naturally in our defense. But um, as you said, we'll, we'll have some different wrinkles to throw at guys coming off ball screens and different actions and um, how we're going to guard things specifically. But um, it's, it's going to be a team concept uh, for all those guys. And whenever any of those guys have the ball individually, they have the capability to score. Um, so I think the four other guys have to be aware of, of what's going on um, when, they, when their man doesn't have the ball and um, playing a really sound defensive game. You guys have lost the rebounding battle in the last two games. Uh, how have you guys gone about addressing that in this week in practice, one? And two, how has it been trying to tinker and adjust with the front court rotations with the fact that Malik is kind of struggling holding onto the ball at this point? A lot of yelling. No, uh, <laughs> I, think, <laughs> I think for us, um, you know, I, I think adjusting in a film is really important, just like anything, whether it's, you know, offensive execution or closeouts or whatever that looks like. You know, rebounding is a big, big piece of that. So uh, adjusting that in film, seeing where we're missing opportunities to be physical, um, to even think about rebounding and boxing out. Some of our guards have, have struggled with that. Um, so I think addressing and getting that in the psyches of our minds, of being front of mind of how important rebounding is um, and how unacceptable our rebound, rebounding performance has been uh, so far this season. So. Um, I think making it a priority has been has been step one, and I think step two is just you know you mentioned with the the front line rotation. I think you know I, I think Malik holding on the ball is 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 less of a Malik thing rather than a, a symptom that's kind of pervasive throughout the group right now. Unfortunately, I, I don't think it's just Malik. A lot of guys are having a hard time you know securing the basketball, rebounding with two hands, uh, getting loose balls with two hands as opposed to dribbling it. Uh, that's not a Malik thing. He'll be fine. He's an experienced guy. He's a tough guy. I've uh, been around in big games and big moments and, and big time competition, and I have no no issues with him. Quick follow up. Do you think Malik's still having some sort of after effects from his injury history? Maybe it's a mental thing. Maybe he doesn't trust his body yet. Anything of that nature? Uh, yeah, I certainly w wouldn't want to speak for him, but I, I think Malik's progressing the way we had expected. You know, I, I think he's, you know, I think his last game against Navy was fantastic. So, um, you know, I, I've seen a couple of things on social media and some, some people throw that out as far as his health and things like that. But uh, us as coaches and him and his teammates, I think we couldn't be more pleased with, with what he did against Navy. And, and hopefully that's a sign for um, the way he's going to progress moving forward. But, um, you know, I th thought he did some great things moving the basketball, um, being kind of a, you know, a hub of what we're doing on offense and playing through him and making plays for other people. Um, obviously, he has the capability to defense rebound and push in and transition himself, um, which is really rare for a guy excuse me, for a guy his size in college basketball. Um, and, and I think just, you know, some of the things he did from an assist standpoint, rebounding the basketball, um, you know, I'm really pleased with what he did. So I, I think that's 
that all just kind of comes as the season goes on. Speaking of, of health, before the season, Mason, everybody, you, you guys were saying he was close. As he gets back more and more, obviously looks healthy now, but is his conditioning the thing that maybe has come the furthest in, in the last couple of weeks? Because it seems like he's he can always do what he's doing, but it seems like he's getting better in condition, and, and that means more minutes. Yeah, I'm sure conditioning has something to do with it, but I think a lot of it is just like the rhythm of the game. Uh, this is the longest that Mason Faulkner has ever not played basketball as far as the summer and the offseason and things like that, and, and that's no small thing. I think um, that gets lost in sauce a lot of times for fans. It's like, well, he's hurt. Just like, just get back and play. You know what I mean? There's, as we know, for young people or, or any kind of an athlete, that's just not reality. So um, I think he's done a fantastic job with his rehab. Uh, he was incredibly diligent with Devontae Frazier, who did an awesome job with him, our athletic trainer. So uh, we couldn't have asked for anything more from, from Mason as far as like taking care of his body and doing everything it takes to get ready to play. Um, and I think just knocking the rust off has been a really big piece for him. So um, I, I think, similar to Malik, I think you'll see him kind of continue to progress and get better and better as the year goes on. And, and hopefully that reflects what we're doing as a team as well. As a follow-up, when he's doing what you guys expect him to do, Mason, that is, what's he best at? Because it seems like he's really good at a lot of different things, and he's so versatile and can do so many things. Yeah, I mean, Mason – you know, not to oversimplify, but Mason's a little bit of a hooper, right? Where he, he can do, to your point, he can do a lot of different things well. So um, I've had several people talk to me after the past couple of games say, like, you know, I thought Mason was the scorer. I thought that was his thing. It's like, I think Mason can do what the game tells him to do. I think if you ask for him to facilitate, uh, I think this season he has 13 assists and four turnovers. Um, and for him to come off the bench and play that role where he's a steadying force, gets us in our offense, creates open looks for other teammates, uh, creates looks for himself, I think that's – you know, that's what he'll do. If the game asks for him to score 17 points in a game, which he's obviously capable of throughout his career, I think he'll do that as well. So um, he's a really talented offensive player. You know, he can create space for himself. He can manufacture offense for his teammates. Um, he can get us going in transition. Um, he's really intuitive defensively. Him and Matt Cross are similar in that sense where um, maybe they're not out-athleting people, but they have really good hands, great anticipation, um, and they make plays on that end as well. So um, I, I think, like I said, I think you'll see him progress and become more and more comfortable. You guys are you're playing so many guys, and your rotations can change. And Mike was saying the other night, stressing to guys, you know, it's not going to be everybody's night every night. How do you sort of – what what do you look for to see what kind of buy-in you're getting from guys in that area? In general or, or game night or – In general, in terms of how, how, how – Well, they're, they're buying into this idea that they're going to have to give up some things. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I'm not sure how much people are giving up per se. I, I think – guys are playing their behinds off in practice and I think that's always the number one indicator right if guys are showing up and they're working they're competing and they're doing it every day um, I think that shows the dudes are, are ready or dialed in and, and ready to do what we ask and and that's really all we do ask right just come in and compete and play hard and have a great attitude and, and work for your teammates um, and I think by and large our guys are doing a fantastic job of that um, I think the minutes thing is a little bit overblown thus far from what I've seen in the sense of yes we're playing a lot of guys but um, you know, we're, we're asking a lot of the guys when they're on the floor. So, they, you know, they work their behinds off when they're out there and sprint the floor and work defensively and get on the floor, hopefully, and hopefully we'll rebound a little bit better. Um, but, you know, we, we got to run in transition, and, and we're doing a lot of things differently. Um, and I think that requires some bodies. But, you know, I think last game we played, what, nine guys, um, ten guys eventually rose. So um, it, it's not this, you know, line change like I did at the University of Redlands that, that we did in the past. So. Uh, guys are going to play, guys are going to get their opportunities, and, and I think they're really excited about it. When you have a guy like like Sam, is a guy who started most of last year. Um, he comes in now and is coming off the bench and, and playing well in that role. What is it? Does it tell you anything about a guy? Do you learn anything about him the way the way a guy adapts to that? Yeah, to your point about last year, I mean, Sam did a terrific job coming off the bench at that point during, during the last season where he really responded to that challenge. Uh, we had asked him to, to fulfill some duties that he wasn't quite up to snuff with, and um, you know, and as a consequence of that, other guys were doing some things better and brought him off the bench last year. Uh, and I thought, I think he saw some of the best basketball of his career down the, down the second half of the season last year. So uh, I think we're seeing a continuation of that this year. And, you know, not that it's some permanent thing where he's always going to be, you know, a bench specialist or anything like that. But, um, you know, he's a guy that's, that's shown some gumption in that regard where, you know, if you if not necessarily doubt him, doubt him, cer certainly not the word, but if you, you put him in a situation where, okay, I, I got to prove myself all over again, he's always responded. So. Uh, I've been really proud of him in that regard. I think he's shown a lot of character there. And uh, I think it's been a, a really good example for younger players, too. Somebody like Rose that, you know, didn't play initially. And then, you know, he gets his opportunity against Navy and plays really, really well. So, um, you know, for Sam to be that kind of example for younger players, I think is awesome.
One last one for me on that. Does that did the experience last year when he comes off the bench for a few games, did that inform any of that this year as you guys are deciding, hey, what are we going to do? Some guys might have to come off the bench who are accustomed to starting, and he handled it well. Did that matter? No, it really didn't. Um, yeah, I, I just don't think you can – Personally, I don't think you can coach that way, where you're just like, well, gosh, he didn't handle it well last year. Let's walk on eggshells around him this year. I just don't think you can do that um, and hold guys account, uh, to account. excuse me. So uh, that, that never really came into play or the thought process or anything like that. I think it was just a situation where um, guys in, in different situations were playing at a higher level in practice and were more consistent in practice. Um, and, and Sam, is, like I said, has responded to that really, really well. Um, I think, it, obviously, his game performance has been great, which everybody sees. But what he's done in practice has been terrific, too. So. Um, you know, hopefully that continues to go in the right direction, and you know, eventually he'll be right where he wants to be. Whether that's stats, whether that's postseason accolades, uh, but more importantly, us winning. Uh, I think it's all on the table when he continues to play like that. Uh, with the team as deep as this, and so many players rotating in and out, in and out, with all the rotations you guys throw up, how difficult has it been trying to assign quote unquote roles to all these different players? You know, again, not not necessarily as difficult as I think it's it's being portrayed to be. I, I, I think. Um, guys come, they play really, really hard, and then they sub out and they get back in and do the same thing. So um, roles as far as, uh, I don't know if you mean shots or you know, responsibilities on the floor, but none of that changes. You know, if guys are playing 18, 20 minutes a game, like, that's, that's kind of, they know what they're supposed to do. Um, and, and if they're playing for five minutes a game, like if Sidney Curry's going to play six minutes in a game uh, against Furman, he knows what he's supposed to do in those six minutes. Um, and, and it's not, it, there's no sense of, well, gosh, we're going to ask somebody to do something completely different the next game as we did the last. So um, roles are defined. Uh, everybody's really on page with what they're being asked to do. Uh, everybody's really dialed in on, on what their definition of, of how they're going to contribute to this team is. Um, and, and that doesn't vary with minutes. Anything else? Great. Thanks, Coach. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Coach. <laughs>